Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia aka Crafty Owl here with a project for Not Too Shabby. In today's video, I'm going to be using products from their new Cottage Charm release to create this quick, cute, and beautiful cherry blossom card. Not only does Not Too Shabby come out with monthly subscription kits and products, but they also have special quarterly releases. Here in front of me is a look at their latest one, Cottage Charm. I will have links to the new release as well as the specific products I use today in the description box below. Let's get crafty! I'm going to get started by using the cherry blossom background and stamping that onto a piece of vellum. I cut a five and a half inch square and later I will be die cutting it down a little smaller. Because the vellum is non-porous, I use stays on ink in jet black. To try and hold my vellum in place while I did the stamping, I added some adhesive to the back and placed it onto the mat of my Misty. To set up the cherry blossom stamp, since it is see-through, I just put this face down where the vellum was and I just made sure that all of the edges would be covered by the stamp. And then I picked it up with the door of my Misty. Now as I was rubbing those manufacturing oils off for the first use, I did notice that I had a little bubble in the stamp. So I lifted up the edge and pushed that out before placing it back down. Now because my stays on ink pad is a little dry, I did make sure to ink this up nice and well. Usually with the Misty, you can go back and stamp it a second, third, fourth time, but it always seems that when I use stays on ink, it pulls up whatever paper I stamp it onto. So I do only have one chance here. Now when I thought I had a good, hopefully, impression, I picked back up the stamp or turned the door over and I went over it with my fingers. And as I pulled the vellum away, if I noticed any areas that didn't get enough ink, I would put it back down and press my fingers. And here's a look at that stamped piece. I think it turned out just beautiful. For the sentiment on this card, I chose You Fill My Day With Happiness from the new Good Morning stamp set. I will be stamping this onto a scrap of white cardstock using VersaFine Onyx Black ink. I just like this one when I'm doing detailed stamping like sentiments. Once I got my stamp set up, once again I rubbed off those manufacturing oils since this is my first time inking it up, and then I got it stamped onto the cardstock. Then I brought in the coordinating die and took that off screen to cut it out. Now it's time to add some color to the vellum piece. For this, I'll be using Arteza watercolor pencils. I chose plum purple, which when it's blended out, it matched some of the pinks from the ephemera I'll be using later on the card. I am using a blender pen, but if you have Gamsol and a blending stump, you could use that too. You could also use regular colored pencils. I just found that my watercolor pencils work nicely with vellum. Now this is a technique that I shared the other day to create the card that's up on screen now. I will link that video in the description box below, so I won't go over the coloring in as much detail as I did. But basically I flipped the vellum over so the stamped part is below or is on the bottom now. And then I added a little color to the center of each flower and blended that out with the blender pen. Because cherry blossoms are usually darker in the center, I thought this would work well for this piece. You'll see then when you turn it over, it is just a very subtle coloring. Now one thing I want to mention while I show you a little bit more of the coloring on this is that there are going to be other artists sharing their creations using these new goodies. So make sure to check out the hashtag in the title, which I have up on screen now, so you can go see what they're creating. I finished coloring this piece off camera and you might notice it's a bit smaller now. While I was coloring, I brought in the frame that I was eventually gonna use on the card to make sure I had colored in enough area. Now I accidentally took the vellum to the die cutter with this frame instead of cutting the frame and then trimming this down later on its own. I had planned on adding the vellum to the back of the frame so it was popped up off the card a little bit, but I decided to make it work. 
I prepped some more pieces off screen. That was a pink frame and I chose two of the ephemera to go on the card and I also created a light gray top fold card base. To get started, I'm going to use a piece of removable tape and place my vellum piece onto the center of the card base where I think it will eventually go. Then I took some time playing around with how I wanted to arrange those two flowers and let me tell you that took longer than it should have, but when I finally liked the layout, I brought in another little piece of that removable tape. Actually, I brought in two, you'll see there, and I held these pieces together and to that pink frame. Then I brought in my Barely Art liquid glue and I started adhering the ephemera to the frame and each piece to the other. This was an easy way to keep it in place where I wanted it and be able to adhere the pieces at the same time. I wanted to add some dimension to the card by popping up this frame. To do that, I brought in some thin foam strips for behind the pink frame and I added some wider foam behind the floral elements. Now before I can place this onto the card base, I want to get my vellum put in place. Originally, like I said, I wanted to adhere the vellum to the frame, but since I didn't, I had to be a little bit strategic with where I placed it glue so that it didn't show through the vellum. I placed some down in the lower left where the ephemera would hide it and then in the upper right behind the centers of the flower. Once I had that in place I pulled the release paper on all the foam tape and then I very carefully and gently started to put my frame onto the card. I wanted to make sure that the frame lined up pretty well with where the vellum would cut off. Once I thought I had a good place, I pressed that down hard, and now we're going to finish the card off with some embellishing. I added some foam tape to the back of the sentiment so it would be at the same height as the frame, and then I'll be using some of the pink glittery enamel dots from the new Cherry Blossom Spring Cottage Pack. I pulled the release paper from the sentiment and then I put it in the upper right so some of it overhung the frame just like with the flowers on the bottom left. Then I place three of those glittery enamel dots on the front of the card. To decorate the inside of the card and to make it easy to read my personal message, I decided to add some of the stamps from the new Cup of Tea stamp set in the bottom right. I chose the two flowers and the open hearts and I got that trio set up on a piece of white cardstock that was three and three quarters by five inches. Once I had those in place, I inked it up with the bubblegum ink, which is the same color as the cardstock frame on the front, and then I got that stamped. And here are some close-up looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I created today's card using new goodies from Not Too Shabby. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to check out the hashtag in the title to see what the other artists have created. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.